What's up, Wolves fans? You're watching PatCast, presented by Extreme, powered by Mediacom. Today, I'm here with Iowa Wolves assistant coach, James White. You know, James, we're coming back from All-Star festivities, and, you know, you've had your fair share of uh, dunk contest experience. Do people really get how hard it is to, you know, show them something new in a dunk contest? Well, these days, it's, it's, it's difficult. I mean, pretty much everything's been done already, so, I mean, when you go out there, I mean, you're trying to do st new stuff, but you're trying to win, so it's tough, so... Uh, it gets more difficult every year. Yeah, so 2013 dunk contest, take me back. We're bringing out the flight attendants. We're bringing out the, the air traffic controllers for James Flight White. Whose idea is that? What, what's even the logistics that goes into like, hey, bring me out a bunch of flight attendants? So here's the crazy part. So I don't, so th there's a thing, there's a day where you practice, you do all you go through. I didn't go to it because I don't practice. I don't think you should practice dunks. I, I don't like to practice my dunks. I just like to go out there, whatever happens, happens. So I didn't go to that thing. So when they, when it was my turn, I didn't know they were doing it. Hey, we got, we got to get something for James. <laughs> Actually, when I went out there, I didn't see those people until I went back. I do my little thing where I don't really have to go back there, but I go back there and set it all up and do that. And build the anticipation, then I look and those people are there. So I'm like, oh, what the? Yeah, and so this year, you know, coaching the G League, G League guy comes out, wins the whole thing. What'd you think watching, you know, watching Mac McClung win? I mean, I, I was happy for him, first of all, because he's from the G League. Second of all, he's from Virginia. So he's a local guy, a guy from around my, from my era, uh, area. So um, I was happy for him. He's the, you know, nobody knew him, kind of like when I was in it, nobody really knew who I was. So, so for him to go out there, you know, make himself a household name was really dope. Now, I did see you had something to say about the, oh, that's a push off yeah, one, whatever. What do you, what, I don't what's like the little dunk contest so, gimmicks so, that you, so you want to call like, out on people? So, two, uh, probably like four years ago, I, I, um, I judged a the thing called the dunk, uh, dunk king, dunk, dunk something. It was like, uh, it's a, on, on the internet, all the best dunkers in the world, all the best guys you can think of. Uh, we're in it. It's like 10 guys that do a dunk competition. I was the judge, me and the professor, one of the judges too. And, um, I learned a lot, man. They told me all the little tricks. And that one of the tricks is when they do the little thing like this, they, they take the ball, they push off, get a little more leverage and do the dunk. So anytime I see that, I don't like it. I don't like those dunks. I think that it's like a gimmick, like cheating dunk. All right. So we're going back. Prime Flight White, 2023 Mac McClung. Prime? Or dunks. Prime? Who's winning? Who's Prime winning? Flight? Uh, Prime Flight White. Oh, nobody's beating me. Prime Flight. Nobody all right, so four dunk combo. What are you winning on? I do. I, I'll do everything somebody else do for the free throw line. So I do whatever, whatever dunk they do, I'll do for the free throw line. So we're going between the legs, free throw line. Between the legs, behind the back, free throw line. Backwards, backwards from the free throw line. A regular two hand windmill. That's pretty much it. Pretty over, much anything. Over. You ever gone a step farther back? I, um, I've went like the middle, the middle from the middle and the top of the key. And I've grabbed the rim from the top of the key. So uh, that was that was gonna be my final try my final dunk in the 2013 was gonna be me trying to dunk on the top of the key. What happened on the second one? I was just watching that. Let me tell you, let me tell you. So everybody always asks me. So my first dunk, I had an NBA ball. They was new slick NBA balls. So I went to go dunk and a ball slipped out of my hand because they were new. I don't have big hands, so I can't fully pawn a ball. So on the second dunk, I asked for the little three-point competition ball, the rubber ball. So they gave me the rubber ball. So I was like, cool, I can grip the ball. So I go, you know, run back there. So my dunk was from the right side of the uh, free throw line. So the dribble came out a little bit a couple times. So start from the right side, switch to the left side. So when I go to, you know, dribble the ball up, the ball is it's not a real basketball. So it, it didn't bounce. So when I go, it's like, boom, I run back, the ball's back there. So I go back again. It's, so it's messing up my rhythm so every time i'm going i'm kind of like off a little bit so that's kind of like what happened it was, it was basketball but also the first dunk i got was like they gave me like eights sevens so the second dunk had to be something crazy because you only get two so that's another thing you know you had a long stretch in the nba you're now trying to you know get this next crop of guys to that point you know what do you think is the biggest thing that you're able to share from your experience with these guys just my experience is like the the I mean, now that I'm on the other side, I'm here with the, you know, what people like, you know, what they don't like, you know, how they look at these guys. And I just trying to share the insight um, of what I know from my experiences. A lot of these guys are very similar to how I was attitude wise, plant wise. So try to give them the, the ins and outs of the other side of what those people are seeing in a way where I'm not just telling them everything, but 
trying to tell them different things and different tricks to, you know, get to that next level where it's like just the little things. It's not all about basketball all the time. Just show them that it's not just basketball with the, with the, with the next level. It's not just basketball, it's the other things. And because at your point in your career, you know, you had a little bit of that, you know, back and forth. You're in Italy, you're mm -hmm. back in the NBA. You kind of moved around a little bit before you found your, you know, yeah. footing for the longer stretch. Do you feel like, you know, the G League in its format now would have, you know, benefited you more? Like at that point in your career, do you feel like you would have been someone who'd really benefited from that? I would definitely. I mean, the way it is now with the two ways and the exhibit 10, I would have really been, I probably would have never went overseas because it was, it's more, it's easier now to get uh, those looks and those call ups and uh, especially with the COVID years and stuff like that. So I probably would have, it's more, it's more of an opportunity to get to where you want to get to. But um, I mean, it's, it's still, I know a lot of guys that would could play in the NBA, it's overseas, that's making a good, good living over there. Um, there's nothing wrong with that either, man, because I mean, I mean, that's great basketball over there. But it does seem like it, you know, it's, they're really making an effort to keep some of those yeah. guys who otherwise would have Definitely. done what you did and go like, it's a lot once you get to Italy, now it's like it's that much harder to come back. And instead you're, yeah. you know, you're keeping that talent on the side I of I think it's a lot more talent here now than it used to be. You know, a lot of guys are choosing, they're, they're, they're choosing to stay here. Where a lot of guys, we got guys on our team well, that, you know, would have a great career over there, but, you know, chose to stay here for the opportunity to play here. So um, I think that's a, that's a great thing. And it's, it's keeping the talent here and guys are developing here and getting better uh, for the NBA game. Yeah, I mean, you can look at the roster right now. You've got the Emmanuel Moutiers, PJ Dozier's. You have guys that maybe are a step away that this otherwise, if you're going to Italy, that kind of just is, is really not, you know, is stopping that. Jordan, Craig, Maddie. I'm talking about guys that can really shoot the ball and are very skilled. Those guys will flourish overseas and have long careers overseas with lots of money, living in beautiful places. Um, and maybe they'll go over there one day. But right now, I mean, they're, they're learning the game here and uh, flourishing here and getting the opportunity here. But those guys, those are the type of guys that will do very well over there. So switching gears a little bit, you have an organization called Trusted Legacy. Can you talk a little bit more about, you know, the mission there and why that means a lot to you? Well, I was doing the basketball side, um, training guys, doing the finishing plan and trying to figure out what I was going to do. I have a good friend named um, Tyrese Rice who started a, a organization called Trusted Legacy where it focuses on the mental side of the game, mental health and different stuff, starting from the youth all the way to pros and helping them just develop and do the small things with using your mental to get better to for the game, you know, and not just sports, it could be anything. Um, and, you know, I try to start helping him, not just with the basketball stuff, but just organizing for going to schools, doing little giveaways, doing different things. He's doing a great job in Houston, um, incorporating the basketball with the, with the mental health side. You know, he's getting, a, he got his degree in, in some psychology. So he's doing, taking the extra step to, you know, and um, but just trying to do stuff to, you know, really, you know, take that part of the game and, and take it to another level where it's like, you know, guys are, have somewhere to go in every sport if they have those type of issues, because everybody does. So, I mean, you look at players like Ridley from um, the Falcons who had issues last year with his mental health, had to take some time off and, you know, you know, we gotta have a place, we're trying to get to a place where we have a facility of our own so people can come to and like, uh, if they have mental, they can train, take care of their mental health, do all those different things, and, you know, a one-stop one shop, kind of. You know, and now we're entering the, you know, the tail end of the season. We're kind of, you know, in this home stretch. You guys are going to have a lot of road games in a row. Um, who have you seen on this roster so far that, like, has really grown the most from that first day in the gym, you know, back in October when everyone got here? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I look at it. Uh, the guys that are, that are young, that's just their first year, like a Javante. Um, I think he's growing and learning um, every day. Um, it's tough, man, being a rookie, uh, not knowing what you like, not knowing anything. I mean, it's a different game from college to come to the NBA, and you're learning all these different things and learning spacing, and, learning, and he's he's doing a great job. Um, of continuing to get better every day and working. He's one of the guys that always gets to work in. So he's continuing to get better and I think he's gonna figure it out and um, have, a, have a big opportunity. And we mentioned, you know, we had this nine game homestand. Now, 
you got to pay those back in a whole bunch of road games in a row. How's the team prepare for, you know, the slog of just being on the road for a whole lot of games in a row? I think these guys are prepared for it. I think they're, 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 they're relishing it. I think they want to go on the road. And sometimes you like to get away a little bit. Um, and we're not going to bad cities, by the way. So, you know, it's not a bad thing. So I think these guys are looking forward to going on the road, man. It's always tough, but when you get that, that road win, it's much, 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 much sweeter. So um, we're looking forward to it.